Hi guys, welcome to Code Decode. Today we will continue with our microservice communication session. Please like, share and subscribe to support us and we are setting a like target of 500 likes. We have already seen what are the ways to communicate with microservices, what is async communication, what if the message broker is down, what are types of async communication that is point to point, that is ActiveMQ, RabbitMQ and Publish Subscriber that is the Kafka. What is event based communication is also we have covered. Today we will see how asynchronous and synchronous communication works and what are the real time examples of these both kind of communications. So this was our communication. This was a vaccination center. This was slot availability microservice. Vex user asks to vaccination center cannot book a slot. Vaccination center asks the slot availability for that particular vaccination center you are trying to book a slot for. If it is available, it books the slot and sends you an email or a text message on your phone that yes your slot for a day or time this tourist is booked at this particular vaccination center this was our flow when we started our microservice creation right so how does this internally works so every application generates a message in the form of calls to apis the way the architect designs this communication affects the application's performance, resource consumption and availability to execute the task. So whatever you decide, whether this should be a synchronous call or asynchronous call, what are these type of communications are going to make a very big effect on your performance of your application. So when microservice communicates synchronously, it sits idle until it receives a call or response back. For example, a synchronous execution occurs during vaccination slot booking. A user decides to book a slot, generates a query to determine if slot is available to the slot microservice. It will wait until slot is booked in the vaccination center. So this should be a synchronous behavior because you should not have a mismatch between slot booking and slot availability. So when you when the user asks for the slot availability and slot registration, there should always be a synchronous call in the real time because you should not have a mismatch between slot booking request gone and slot response. So this is a very bad practice that you request that you should block a slot and you receive a message, okay, it is booked. But internally when it tries to go asynchronously and see if there is no slot available, there is no way to get back to the user and say, oh no, the message that I have sent you previously was wrong. There is no slot available. So this should, this cannot be at any cost be a asynchronous call. It should always be okay request went. It should check the database. If it is available, block the slot and send it back to the response as a user. And then after the, every process is done, you have your slot booked. You should always get a mail or a text message showcasing what is the place, where is the vaccination slot center booked for, what is the time, what is the date. Everything should be received in the text or the email format. So this is the real time example of synchronous communication where asynchronous cannot work for you at any cost. Conversely, asynchronous communication allows code to continue to run even after it has generated a, a call or a response. So even after you have sent a response, after that also some processing is actually done. That is asynchronous communication. The asynchronous communication is particularly valuable for reporting and alerts. For example, sending an email or text message that your slot is booked to which particular vaccination center at what time at what date. So here when your slot booking is done and a response is back, then again one call goes to the email service or the SMS service to send all the details of the book slot to the user. So the another user should not wait or this user should not go ahead and wait for booking another slots or something. This text message or email service will be a very different service which can be called asynchronously. So you have the slot availability, this particular vaccination center service is all the details for the vaccination slot generated or registered. So it can internally go ahead and send a response that you will be shortly receiving the mail and the text message for the slot that you have booked and simultaneously in the asynchronous way when user is doing something else vaccination doing something else slot availability doing something else another service call is going to happen which will call email service and text message service to send the notifications to the user later on so this is a real time example of asynchronous call where user or anybody should not wait for user to receive the mail Mail will automatically be received with some mailing applications that you're using for the backend. User can start doing its own task. So that is asynchronous communication for you. That's the real time application of asynchronous calls where that is reporting and alerts. Now you have seen the real time example of both. You cannot use the asynchronous call while booking a slot. 
बिकॉज इफ यू रिसीव अ मैसेज ये स्लॉट बुक एंड इज नो स्लॉट अवेलेबल यू विल बी नॉट ट्रबल सो नो असिंक्रोनस कॉल इन रियल टाइम हियर एंड यू शुड द यूजर शुड नॉट वेट टू रिसीव द ई मेल द वैक्सीनेशन स्लॉट शुड बी बुक एंड यूजर शुड डू अनदर टास्क अंटिल then it should not be blocked so this should never be a synchronous call it should never wait for receiving a text message it should continue doing other kind of stuff so they have both potential pros and cons in the application so it might be asked in an interview that you know okay you know when to use synchronous and when to use asynchronous call in real time application but what is the advantage of using synchronous what is disadvantage of using the synchronous call and the vice versa for the asynchronous ones so you should know that so the possible pros of using the synchronous call is it is very simple in design you just have to create two microservices and interact them with the rest apis and send response only and only when the response is received from the rest apis so this is very simple in design and uh, there is no, no no complications in synchronous communication but there is a very big performance impact because of synchronous communication and that is that if there is a failure in any of the microservice then your whole application will fail so there is a chances of risk of spreading failures across these services so if you have this microservice calling this microservice when the response gets back call the third microservice if the first microservice is down then even the third microservice call will not happen and hence even the whole system can get down so the chances of spreading the failures across multiple services is very high in synchronous communication but there are many ways to mitigate this uh, synchronous communication failures you must always have the load balancing and service discoveries so you, if one microservice is down you should have multiple replication of slot microservice with uh, like as in replication to slot availability one slot availability two all having the replicated code but it is low load balanced so when multiple users hit to book a slot it will be load balanced by a load balancer and you have three instances of the slot availability microservice and it will hit based on the load factor so this is a way to mitigate this disadvantage of synchronous communication but still it has performance effect and hence a synchronous communication comes into picture to increase the performance of an application and to increase the user experience but the disadvantage of asynchronous communication is again it is very complicated in architecture and data consistency is a problem we have already seen why data consistency is a problem if you have done the asynchronous communication here you might have sent a response to user okay your slot is booked but internally data is not available slot is not available data is inconsistent and you will see okay the slot is not available then you will have to face an issue while sending a response back to user sorry your registration is cancelled there was no availability so there was there is a data consistency problem but many advantages are available with synchronous communication a very first thing is resilience and scalability even if your microservice second is down even if this particular sort of availability is down a message will be sent to the broker and it will go ahead and book a slot once the slot service is available so there is a lot of resilience but this doesn't work in our case so what you can do here is you can put a message to the broker here that please send the email and a text message to the user that your vaccination center details are here so you can put that message to the uh, message broker and even if your email service or text message service is down once it gets up it will pull the message from the broker and send the details to the user and hence user is said please wait you will receive the mail after some time so this is asynchronous communication the advantage is resilience and scalability it provides a better control over failures than synchronous setups so even if the service is down then also after when sometime when it gets up user will always get the notification so there is better control over failures of the over the synchronous setups loosely coupled microservices so here you have seen if the slot availability is down even vaccination center will not be able to respond back to user the response is blocked even if the third microservice is to be called after the slot availability calls that will also be disrupted and hence this is very tightly coupled vaccination center has to be up slot application service has to be up if there is not up the application is down so this is very tight coupling but in case of the asynchronous communication even if the email microservice is down or the text sms microservice is down still your task will not be disrupted whenever it is up it will send the notification to user and hence it is loosely coupled now a very important concept from interview perspective when to use which type of communication when do you use synchronous communication when do we use asynchronous communication when you are going to start a particular application designing as an architect so when you start creating an application from scratch 
you should always go with the synchronous communication why because in the pros i have told you synchronous communication is simplified it is not complex to understand multiple components in an application at the scratch is a very tough task how they will communicate and how they will send message to each other is a complex pro complex procedure all together so introducing a synchronous communication will increase the complexity in the application and hence you should always start with synchronous communication architecture to optimize the speed of evolution of the application and once your application is stable and when your microservice architecture starts to grow and becomes complex in functionalities then you should switch to a synchronous communication so how will you move from synchronous to asynchronous communication okay we understand that when you start an application developing and designing you should just go ahead and and make all the communication synchronous so that you do you will have less complexity in designing the communication between multiple microservices but when you have your application stabilized and you have multiple microservice architecture stable then you can go ahead and move all the services which can communicate asynchronously to move from synchronous to asynchronous communication phase how will you do that first of all find all the possible communications within your microservices with each other and figure out if it is strictly needs to be synchronous in our case yes vaccination center and slot availability registration has to be a synchronous call it cannot work in a synchronous way otherwise user experience will be disrupted completely so find out such kind of possibilities where you strictly needs to be synchronous if it is really necessary stick to the synchronous call else like suppose here this message user does not have to wait for the emails and text message to continue booking another slot for the another user in the vaccination center you can go ahead with the asynchronous call so if response is really not necessary to proceed with other functionalities then only go and convert that particular channel as asynchronous communication channel like with active infuse rabbit infuse and kafka so in real time you understand how to move from scratch to a well stable application from the scratch go ahead find all the components so there's a five to six microservices go ahead and make all them synchronous once you are done with your designing purpose there is no problem with the client go ahead and find out all these communication between multiple microservices which does not strictly needs to be synchronous if they are really needed then only keep them synchronous otherwise make all of them asynchronous where the response is not necessary for the better user experience like example logging sending emails sending text messages to the users and many other such kind of things so it doesn't need any user interference and don't don't make users wait for long now let's get to the conclusion for the synchronous or synchronous communication because we have to quickly move towards the kafka designing and architecture so one of the traditional approach for communicating between microservices to rest apis however as the system evolves the end the number of microservices grows communication becomes complex and services start depending upon each other and become tightly coupled which slows down the development teams and also makes the failures very common in such kind of tightly coupled applications this this model exhibits low latency okay so uh, you will get a very good user experience but works if services are highly available so you have to make sure all your microservices are all time available to overcome this design disadvantage new architecture aims to decouple the receivers from senders with asynchronous communication here we are going to use the kafka centric architecture the low latency is preserved with additional advantage of message balancing am amongst the consumers and the centralized management to overcome the disadvantage of tight coupling a loose coupling came into picture and loose coupling is done through a message broker so one such very good example is kafka centric architecture so when you are dealing with legacy platform a recommended way to decouple a monolithic one make it ready to move to a microservice implementation you should always start with a synchronous but as you grow with us architecture go and implement a synchronous messaging to decouple the monolithic application with each other so that was all about the conclusion part we have many more things to cover like difference between active mqs rabbit mqs then what is kafka pros and cons of kafka terminologies in kafka architecture in kafka and then we will go ahead and implement the kafka in real time and see how this actually works when it comes to real time log aggregation with kafka if you want to know that let me know in the comment section i'll continue with this series ahead thank you